All right, here we go. Sorry for the late start, ladies and gentlemen. But here we are once again. Happy Wednesday. This is another Project Healing Water special. What is today? Today is September 9th. How about that? Another week. So I'll turn off my... Uh, I know I can hear myself, so i got to turn that down. That way we don't have that uh, echo sound. So it doesn't sound like I'm in a tunnel. So anyways, here we are. Happy Wednesday. Uh, when we left last week, there was some question uh, whether or not I was going to be able to make it tonight for the live stream um, based off of uh, headed out, having some fun, doing some camping um, out of the back of the truck. And that's what we did. Uh, went out to uh, Lake Carlos State Park. Had a great time. Uh, it was wonderful. The beautiful thing is, is right now midweek, uh, at the state campgrounds, uh, there's nobody there. There's absolutely nobody there. And um, if you're 100% self-sufficient, you don't need to interact with anybody for anything. Um, you know, I was able to uh, self-register online and this and that, just back right into the campsite. Um, I did have to buy some firewood, and because uh, you're not allowed to, and you're not supposed to. Uh, transfer or transit uh, firewood here in the great state of Minnesota on account of uh, ash borer beetles and other invasive uh, doohickeys. Let's see here. I'm trying to get... There we are. Project Healing Waters live stream. Got to make sure we can see ourselves in the chat. This is high-tech monitor system. It's like... If you're watching The Price is Right or something, if it was a live stream, what's a live show? It's like you're when you. It's like if you're watching the local news live, and um, their monitor system is uh, their <laughs> their monitors. They're watching themselves on their iPads. Maybe that's what they're doing with those iPads in front of them. But um, let's see here. Just trying to make sure, just trying to verify and make sure we are live streaming. It looks like we might be having some technical difficulties. I don't know. Feel free to say a hiya hello in the chat. Let me know how you're doing today. Uh, hiya and uh, hello. Uh, hiya and a hello. Uh. Anyway, so I figured today, tonight, uh, we would, I don't know, I've, I've been pressed for time, um, and the beautiful thing is what we're going to do is we're just going to have some fun with Pheasant Tail. Last week was a, a willy bugger mania. I know there might have been some confusion in the titling or labeling uh, and the, or whatever the description for uh, this video, this live stream. See, it still says it up there. Fun with pheasant tail. On a pheasant tail. There we go. All right. So this is our Project Healing Water special. Welcome once again, everybody. Um, so let's go ahead and slide over to the bench, and we'll just uh, start having fun tying up some. Uh, uh, variations of uh, using pheasant tail. We're going to start off with a pheasant tail nymph, pretty standard. Um, but let's go from there. All right, we need to get ourselves some hooks and let's go. We'll start this off with a. We'll do it pretty big. Why not? I like size 12. 12s, 14s. I know a lot of people talk about uh, catching a lot of fish with uh, smaller, smaller flies. You know, and you know it's the whole match the hatch and the 20 for 20 club, etc., etc. Um, there we are. So I'm just going to use just a standard. A size 12 barbless hook. I thought I 
bad one. There we go. Too easy. We'll make sure we're in camera, in frame, in focus. Looks pretty good. I could come in a little bit tighter on the next one if we uh, need to go there. Let's go ahead and I'm going to use this black 70 denier. Uh, it's a, or a six out, kind of right there, middle of the road. Uh, flat waxed. I like waxed thread. Um, I know that if you are a uh, when you're first getting into fly tying, there's you know you have so many different questions, and you know one of the things is, oh, can I just go to the uh, Joanne Fabrics and or the local fabric store and just load up on a uh, fly tie or whatever thread. Yeah, it works. Um, you'd really have to wax it. And I don't think it's going to be quite as uh, sturdy. Well, I'm not going to say it can't, can't be as sturdy or sturdy enough. Um, but you're rolling the dice. Use a lot of head cement. So, all right, we have ourselves. Look at this. This is just a standard pheasant tail. Nice and long. Let's go ahead and take ourselves a few strands. A few strands. A few uh, fibers. Actually, they're not even fibers. They're barbs. I don't know. Three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Let's get this on the back end there. A little scruffy. You could line them up if you so choose. I'm going to leave this a little scruffy. We're going to go about a hook's length. We will for these. Maybe not quite a full hook's length. I like that. Tardy for the party. Had to feed the birds. What kind of birds you feeding? Outdoor birds, or do you got an indoor bird? I like feeding our outdoor birds. I don't have any indoor birds. All right, let's go ahead and just trim that off. Uh, let's find ourselves a little bit of wire. And for that, I need to go find my copper wire. Let's go, I like this kind of brown, this copper brown, and it is actually a BR size. All right, we haven't asked this in a while. Pop quiz, what does BR stand for in the size scale? Right, we got SM for small, LG for large. What in the world is a BR? That's our pop quiz for the day. So we'll go ahead and let me know what your guess is for BR. I don't know if I already said the answer. I could have just said it before I answered the question, but or before I asked the question. Brassy. Here we go. Ding ding. That's the winner bell. Awesome job, Steve. Thanks for playing. Um, let's go ahead. Let's get a little bit more of our pheasant tail. And I will just grab some more right here off the bottom. You could trim it off or you can just grab it tight and give it a nice quick, a quick stout pull. I'm going to tie this in by the tips forward. I like to go in kind of at an angle, just like that. One wrap to capture it, a couple more lax lo wraps locking it in place, and we're going to just wrap forward. I have plenty of pheasant tail, so I really don't have to be super duper conservative with it. Pheasant tail is a pretty, I don't know, up here in the upper Midwest, we have uh, a lot of... Uh, pheasants and you know if you know the right person you can get buku pheasant tail 
So let's go right about there, right about the one-third, two-third point. Now we're going to polymer our pheasant tail forward as best as we can. Nice and tight to the shank of the hook. And what I like to do, if I need to regret, move my move my right hand, I'll put my left finger, and then I can re-grip it over here for my next turn. Use both hands. Use all ten of them digits if you got them. If you don't got them, if you're missing a digit or two, or if you're... unable to function with your hands, there's all sorts of different means and methods for tying flies. I'm not kidding when I say the imagination is the only limitation. Um, it's it's amazing. one arm fly tires. Can you believe it? I believe it. I've seen it. And that's awesome because I don't think anybody should really be limited to, to anything. Limitations. Imagination is your only limitation. And I guess there's a thing where people actually don't have um, you know, an imagination. They can't imagine things. Can you imagine that? I don't know. I don't know. It's been a day. A lot of driving. Got to, like I said, went off to uh, Lake Carlos State Park which is north of Alexandria, Minnesota. And whilst in Alexandria on our drive home, we saw Oli, a 28 foot tall Viking. And he's a happy Viking. He's not one of those angry Vikings. He's a, he's a happy Viking. He looks happy. Um, I'm sure there's angry Vikings out there, but yeah, it was pretty cool. And then we also saw a replica of the Kensington Runestone. All right, we're going to grab a little bit more pheasant tail. Oh. This is going to be our wing case. And you kind of have options, right? We're, well, let's look at the different textures of your uh, pheasant tail. Pick a spot where you think you'll like. We could incorporate those later. But we're gonna just keep it simple, stupid. We're gonna be, we're gonna have all sorts of fun with pheasant tail tonight. Like I said, we're just gonna tie, you know, kind of this one basic regular run-of-the-mill pheasant hill. Um, but beyond that, here we go, peacock, peacock hurl. Love peacock hurl. We're going to experiment. We're going to kind of just uh, venture, venture down Freedom Road and see what we can come up with as far as fun with pheasant tail. Because it's one thing to sit here and replicate what we can see in a book. It's one thing to replicate what everybody else has done. But what about doing something that hasn't been done? Or you haven't done, or I haven't done. I don't know. There's a lot of things. There are more things that I have not done than I have done. Namaste. <laughs> There's a lot more fish that I have not caught that I have caught. I'm looking for my little hackle pliers. Hook and hackle grabber. There we are. These little things. They are worth their weight in gold. Which, I don't know. <laughs> they might be, they might cost more than their weight in gold. 
Park our thread right up front. We're going to give this a little twist clockwise as we wrap. What do you think of that? Nice plump thorax. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. The fish are going to love it. So, Lake Carlos, uh, not much uh, fishing opportunity on this cold, wintry, not wintry, but early fall. It was uh, unseasonably cool um, this morning, last night. So, on our way out, we stopped by the lake and tossed our Tenkara rods and tossed a couple uh, Kabari-style flies and of course we caught some sunnies it's, it's never too big of a surprise when you're catching sunnies let's go ahead and lock this in okay before i go too tight with everything something i like to do is i like to take my bodkin and i am going to go underneath that pheasant tail just run it through once and what that did is that helped kind of puff puff that out a little bit I didn't go in there and lift all I did is just push it through and uh, the diameter of the bodkin uh, kind of helps splay help splay that uh, wing casing out Just like that, we can trim that off. Nice and close, we'll build a small little head. Why not? And that's going to be it. We'll finish it with a 1, 2, 3 wimp finish. Un, deux, trois. Oh, and we broke it. I knew it. I felt it as I pulled it. So with that, we are going to add a little dab of insurance policy on there. And for that, today, right here, right meow, we're going to use our little bench monkey bodkin. Well, this little guy. When I first bought this, I, I, or I don't remember where I bought it, but I used to have a 19, 1986 a Ford Bronco 2 and this little monkey sat on top of my hazard light um, indicator button on the center console on the, or on the steering console I don't know it seemed like a very appropriate place just got to hang out there and then like the whole trunk monkey thing became a thing and it's just like well this guy's been around a lot longer so there's that. There's our first little uh, fun with pheasant tail. A basic little, about as basic as it gets pheasant tail. You know, it's like you can add legs. You don't have to add legs. You can add a bead head. You don't have to add a bead head. Uh, we're gonna see. Um, we're gonna see what we can do with all these. I need to find a little, a little doohickey for to put these little guys in piece of foam. Where did you go? Let's do... Hmm. There it is. Haha. -ha. I knew it wouldn't go far. Actually, we're going to do a few, so we're going to Pack them in like this, so actually we're going to go opposite. We're going to go just like that. So then we have the wide part on the bottom. So when we set it down up here, we don't lose it. Let's just take a second and uh, check in with everybody. All right. There we go. We are back at it. 
Haven't missed a week yet, and, you know, I think if we keep things rolling just as they are, we'll just keep this going through the end of the year at least. I don't know of any holidays. We got Halloween coming up. What are we going to do for Halloween? It would be a good time to practice your casty, candy casting skills, right? You can set a bowl out there and try to cast on and catch a, catch yourself a Snickers bar or something. It might be worth it. So how's everybody doing tonight? Looks like we've got Ben and Steve in the house. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to give that a thumbs up. That hit that like button. And uh, sometime throughout the week, if you get bored, check out some of the uh, archives of the videos. I try to keep my best uh, on updating playlist and uh, as these videos come out. Uh, trying to keep them uh, categorized, organized, etc., etc. And leave a comment. I love reading comments. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you who do. It really makes my day. Um, really, it's kind of like getting mail. And it doesn't have to be a big, long, drawn out, blah, 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 blah. Just a, hey, great video. Or, Aaron, that's terrible. Or, hey, what do you think of this idea? Or, whatever. Because... Anything more than just the um, inappropriate spam comments, which every every Project Healing Waters video special we do here, I wake up in the morning after a day or two, it's, hey, come check out this inappropriately whatever website, and it's just like, oh, come on. It's like whack-a-mole. Anyways, um, let's do... Uh, Let's see what else we can do with this pheasant tail. I now I'm curious. Now I'm just absolutely curious as to what kind of trouble I can get in with this. So um, we're gonna do some experiments tonight. Um, get your lab coats on, your thinking caps on, and we are going to, as they say in the biz, send it. Sorry for that slurp. I normally try to hit that mute button before I do that. Uh, let's continue on. We're going to do um, the same. Let's do the same hook. We're going to do another pheasant tail. But we're going to try something different. Alright, we're going to throw some different options. Still going the dark hole with the Kabari style flies. It is fantastic. You know what? We could probably do something like that right here. Um, I need to find thread though. Actually, what I did establish um, something I did establish today is uh, the bluegills, the little sunnies. They really went after the fly that had the little red hot spot on it. Um, and they were also nipping at the surface. Now, when I am talking, um, you know, when I'm saying I'm catching fish, they are not much bigger than a deck of cards. And it's, you know, I'm sight fishing them. I can see them take the fly. I can see them, you know, take the hook. I can see them playing with it. I can see them having fun with it, chasing it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and that's, to me, that's like the ultimate fishing is just having a blast. Um, and I lost my pheasant tail. There it is. I didn't lose it. I just I can't see it. <laughs> There's a difference. All right, let's grab some of this. I like to pull it straight out. Make sure my tips are lined up. We don't need that much. Maybe two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Let's get some of this tail action back here. Take it right to that bend. What we can. 
could also try doing is possibly we can try a uh, a canotted pheasant tail. I believe I nope, that's a scalpel. I thought I had a little yes, a little hook tool. I haven't done this in ages, but we'll try that here um, in a minute. Uh, let's do some wire. Instead of that brassy, let's go. Let's go hot orange. Just like that. Cinch that up, and I like to just tie it in and work my way back. Work my way back. Actually, you know what? I'm going to tie this in just a little bit further forward. That way, I get a little bit more of an even body. A little bit more of an even back end there at the derriere. All right, check this out. All right, we got that tied in, stretched out, and hanging out. All right, just like before, just like before, we're going to grab a little bit more pheasant tail. And just like that. And there's actually some uh, going back. It's a thing that it's a thing that people go back and forth on as to um, some people strip and rip their uh, pheasant tail off just like I did there, and others will snip and trim. Use the scissors. I kind of go back and forth. Um, I'm not really. Hard and fast on any one, any particular method um, in regards to extracting pheasant tail fibers, or barbs, barbules off of the quill. I've really tried to uh, practice using using the correct correct terminology. You know, it's like it's not a, it's not, it's not a fiber. It's a barb. It's a barbule. A barb, barb is short for barbule. Because ultimately, at some point, somebody took the time to name all this junk, and the least we can do is respect that. I like trying to address things by their proper nomenclature. Anybody who's anybody who knows me uh, will know this, and I'm gonna let you guys all in on a little insight here. One of my one of my biggest pet peeves back in the day when I worked in the theatrical industry is. Um, and, and that's where I learned it, and I see it all the time now. Um, calling what is referred to as a, uh, a lot of people will call it a podium. And they're looking for something to stand behind and speak behind. And what they're actually looking for is what's referred to as a lectern. But they want a podium. And sometimes if you ask for a uh, podium, you know, that's... That's what you're going to get because that's what you asked for. And no, that's not what I wanted. Well, that's what you asked for. You said you wanted a podium. And we brought you a four foot by four foot podium to stand on. So what do you do? And it's not a podium. It's called a lectern. If you're at a church, it's the pulpit. You can both sit on a podium. Just think of the athletes at the end of the uh, Olympics, right? They go to the podium. They are all standing on something, not standing behind it, giving a speech. So are you going to give a speech, or are you going to receive a major award? You know what I absolutely forgot to do was what I was going to do, and I was going to add a little bit of pearl crystal flash in with my pheasant tail 
But I got busy jibber jabbering. And we forgot that. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to use some crystal flash here for our wing case. We already have some hot orange um, wire for our ribbing. Let's just experiment here with some crystal flash for our wing case. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Darn it. We're going to multiply by dividing. Watch those loops become non-loops. Hmm. We got, what do we got? Six, eight. I think that might be, I think that might be just enough. Let's go ahead and just tie this in on the back end of that one-third, two-third point. I think that's going to be fantastic. I'll just trim this excess off. See ya. Alright, and let's do our peacock curl again. In fact, you know what? No. I don't want to do peacock. I want... Where did I put it? Oof. Da goof da. I picked up a... Feather Duster. And I want one of these big old quills off. There we go. So instead of, um, I mean, th th this is feather duster quality. So what what you're not going to get is some amazing stuff. And you can see where, I don't know, from packaging or binding or something. Um, not the greatest of quality of stuff, but you know what? A dollar for uh, like a thousand feathers. Take it. I'll just tie a few of these in. And it's kind of hard to get them all by the same length. We're going to tie it in by the tips. And if you want, you can just trim or break this part off. Another thing I'm kind of 50-50 on. Sometimes I trim, sometimes I break. But never break the final the final product, the final front end of something, the final end. Because that would have got buried underneath, and it wouldn't really matter too much. So let's go ahead and twist this up, get a little fuzzy-wuzzy up here. This actually almost looks like a chenille. We'll see how well this holds. That's why we're experimenting. Oh, this is kind of thick, baby, thick. Ooh, baby, look at that. That really sticks out, doesn't it? Man, that's some good stuff right there. And it's a natural color, so I, I can't see it, you know, fading or anything like that. And it's a, it's a natural material. So, we like that. Let's go ahead and just fold this wing case forward. What do we think? I like that. All right, now remember, before I trim this off, I wanted to ramrod, ramrod my, uh, bodkin in there and get kind of get to help that kind of puff out just a little bit there we go run my thread back through what the 
fish don't care. Oh boy. That's the, that's the one downside is as I live stream, I encounter um, a wee bit of a delay. Let's just trim that off. But I kind of like the way this guy looks. I am digging this one. Could have done this maybe with some uh, red thread or some orange thread to kind of match that body. Okay, we're not going to cinch that down too tight. We learned from our last one. Boy, oh boy, I like this one. Oh, run it, run the thread through the thorax. Um, I really don't. It doesn't get too bungled up. I haven't had much, much issues with that. I like that. That's definitely fishy. I'll tell you that for free. I think if I ran the thread through the thorax, we would end up with a little bit of a... Uh... Oh yeah, back through the hurl to strengthen it. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think if it's necessary, I don't think it's entirely um, too necessary. So what I want to do here is... I got a little bit of it coming through my wing case. So what I want to actually do here is I want to do a little bubble. We're going to do a bubble. So I'm going to turn my fly upside down. So this will be how I want it to sit. And we are going to take a drop. Let's find the right stuff. Ooh. That is not a good idea. Always put your razor blades away. Never leave a razor blade out because I just drew a little blood there. Let's go with this medium viscosity um, Solariz. And I am just going to add a little drop. Right on top, and then we're going to kind of fling it upside down and let gravity kind of level this out with a little bit of a drip drop. Okay, now we will let gravity do our thing for us. And I need to get it a little bit more towards this side. So you can't see it. Well, you can't see it, but I'm dive, dipping, dodging, ducking. Here we go. Maybe if we turn turn the camera. There we go. You can see it a little bit. We're just letting the gravity letting that their gravity do its thing. And I think that's going to be it. I'll turn that back over. And we're going to zap it. I really like doing this kind of uh, stuff for the wing cases and junk. We'll zoom right on in here after we flip this fly back over. Ooh. And I'm going to give it another little dab. We're going to do that again. We're going to do something like that again. We're going to do... We're going to incorporate things a little bit better. Um, where did my bone dry go? We're going to take a little dab of the bone dry. Seal that all in. So I got the wing case sealed, but that really didn't do too much to our head up front. 
and then this will be your final our final coat for the final approach and a zap it it almost kind of gives it a opal opal look and I have had um, experiences of you know that little blob of resin popping off after a few after a few hits after a few strikes um, but at that point you've already caught a few fish on it um, I don't know what do you guys say what is what is an appropriate um, length uh, that a fly should exist you know under normal circumstances kind of like that I'm going to give it a little bit more direct light, indirect light. I don't know. I like it. I like it. I love it. Maybe we could have gone just a tick shorter on the tail. But other than that, I think that'll play. What do you think? I kind of like having the camera zoomed in like that. What do you think? Is that a crisp enough of an image? Or what do you think? Man, I love coffee. What can I say? That's some good stuff. Um, I really like that uh, ostrich. I like the way that ostrich came out from, or I think it's, yeah, I think it's ostrich. Yeah, ostrich hurl um, from our, our feather duster. Let's I'm the only person I know that can set something down and it can just absolutely fundamentally cease to exist. What in the world? Because it's at my feet. So yeah, this is a, uh, a Mr. Mr. Longarm. Mr. Longarm. Well, we'll go back to our... Uh, close-up camera there we go mr. longarm uh, this is a duster handheld or attaches to mr. longarm extension poles and then we have it in um, espanol and then in French it looks like and that's all it says it's just a beautiful feather duster Quality is hit or miss, you know, from, you know, feather to feather, but not quality, but yeah, I mean, I guess overall quality. I mean, for what I paid for, it was in the clearance section. Um, it was in the clearance section at the local hardware store. So, you know, uh, keep your eye out. I mean, stuff like this. If it's not for fly tying, if it's not a uh, fly tying specific uh, brand or material, uh, you know, whatever you do, don't spend a lot of money on it. Um, and look for the bargains, look for the good deals. It's like mop flies. If you're going out and you want to tie mop flies, don't spend, you know, $40 on mop fly material. Take your time. Collect it over time. Wait until you see it at the bargain center or in the clearance bin or whatever. The frugal fly tire is seldomly bored, right? So uh, at one point I was working, I was trying to incorporate leather, uh, little pieces of hide 
um, two flies. And what I did is when I went, I was at IKEA and I found some uh, uh, fabric samples or something like that. I don't know. Maybe we'll do that Monday. Monday is going to be fun. We're going to tie all sorts of fun things on Monday. But we're going to just go back and we're going to keep tying. Um, uh, fun with pheasant. Three dollar, dollar general. You know, I, that that's the thing that just blew my mind at one point. Because the dollar store everything should be a dollar and then you walk in and you see stuff it's twelve dollars it's six dollars it's all the same junk it all should be a dollar um, I had this idea way while back about the uh, idea of a hundred dollar store right everything you go in is a hundred dollars right you get a watch you get a fancy pad of paper uh, instead of just bottled water, you get sparkly water that's, you know, it's just $100 a bottle. Same junk, but just a little bit fancier, and you charge $100 for it all. It would have to be like a Times Square or some other, like, major touristy trap thing that you can capture the rich, the wealthy, and the, um, yeah, just the rich and the wealthy. <laughs> I don't know. Let's tie some flies. What can I say? Bum, ba -da -bum, ba -bum. All right, so on this next one, we're going to kind of take a similar approach. Park him with the other one. Yeah, see, I told you that tail was just a tick, just a tick too long. I think those turned out pretty sweet. Those are good to be good friends. All right, so this next one, we're going to follow the same platform, same format, but I want to incorporate a strand, I'm going to incorporate a strand of uh, Crystal Flash in with the uh, Pheasant Tail as we palmer it around for the body. Tracking, tracking. I've got flies everywhere. What can I do? Oh, uh, let's see here. We should start with some thread. And I'm thinking I want to switch over. Do I want to do red thread? No, I'll stick with the black thread. I don't have much in the way of red thread that's small and available. We'll just start this up front. 70 denier, 6 hot thread. Oops. Lay a little thread base. Bump it around. And we know the game here, right? Just grab a few of the pheasant tail barbules. There we go. I like it. I like tying it in, you know, you can try to just immediately turn and burn with that. I don't know, it's not my style, not my thing. I got plenty of pheasant tails to work with, so why stress? Uh, we're going to do silver. We haven't tied one with silver wire in here yet. Oh, we got a little kink in here. I felt that. This is a fine, 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 fine silver wire. All right. So before I forget, I 
want to take one strand of my crystal flash. I want to tie that in. It's just before I forget, because I want to get a little bit more pheasant tail for the body. And I might might tie this or might polymer this in t together or separate. I haven't decided a hundred percent how we're gonna work this out. Let's give that a try. Let's give that a try, Ski. We'll lead with the pheasant tail. And then we'll follow with the uh, flash. And it seems like I'm not going to be able to get those to go at the same time. So, who knows how to divide and conquer. And be mindful of that tip of that hook. Brand new hook. And, you know, I'm using these barbless hooks. I really like them. These uh, Fly Life R7 barbless. Get them from Canada. My friends up north in Canada. Let's get this tied off. One more wrap. Don't be afraid to hold your fly. Pinch on it, twist it. And trim it. Alright. Let's get this untangled. And I'm wrapping this uh, as a forward wrap because I'm going to come over it with a counter wrap with the uh, ribbing, the silver wire. Let's get that all out of the way. This is just adding a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of bling. I wonder if we add a red one. I wonder how that would have looked. Let's go ahead and counter wrap with our ribbing. Do one full rotation at the rear. And then we'll start angling forward. Nice and even wraps. That's what we're looking for. And you know, if they're not 100% even, that's okay. But they kind of blend right in. They kind of just disappear with each other. Can't really see the silver. And you can't really see the... Uh, Pearl. Uh, let's trim our wire. Bada boom. All right. Let's see here. Let's think of something for our. Um, oh yeah, we're gonna use this and then that. Gonna do a little deluxe combo action here. We're gonna take a we're gonna do a one two. Oh, we gotta tie in our uh, order of operations, a, a Ron. Let's do. I really like that pearl. So we're gonna do that again. We're gonna take some uh, crystal flash again. We're going to do our little bubble. Let's see, one, two. That's a whole bunch. Let's go two, four, five. And this will quickly multiply as we divide and conquer. We got five becomes ten. And that'll be plenty. Plenty of strands. 
plenty of room to work with it too. I didn't want to trim it too small. So this is going to be the foundation for that bubble. Put that resin on top of it, and it's going to be a beautiful sparkly blob. <laughs> oh, yes. And while I'm for before I forget, we're going to add one strand of red crystal flash in that mix. What do you think of those marbles, huh? One strand of red right in the inside of all that. And that should give us maybe some red... Kind of a reddish shoe inside of that. I don't know, we're experimenting now. I am going down uncharted territory for myself here, and... I'm personally just really glad, honestly, I'm really glad you all are here to share this with me because I really just, I just really enjoy tying. I really enjoy sharing what I am coming up with and working with and going through. Imagination being the only limitation. All right, we're going to do two parts ostrich. Nice little brown fluffy stuff. All right, three parts. One, two, three. Three strands. Tie that in. And where is my uh, peacock? We're going to do emu, or not emu, ostrich and peacock. What? Can you do that? Absolutely you can. We're going to go one, two. Here we go. I used to work with this guy. He was trying to say hybrid, but he always called it a hybrid. This was way back when, when hybrids were just really starting to come out. He was talking about the new. I got the new hybrid. Got that new hybrid. You see those new hybrids? They get real gas mileage. I'm like, yup, they sure do. All right, let's find our feathers out of this mix. We got one, two, three of the ostrich and one, two, three, uh, or two peacock. All right, we're gonna grab those with our hook and hackle plier grabber thingers. And we're gonna see what happens. We might have, maybe we needed to go a different ratio, but this is gonna give us something. Give that a nice twist. And I think we're kind of getting the best of both worlds out of this. Because we're getting that fluff. But we're also getting that magical iridescent undertone of the peacock curl. Well, I will say this one is a loud and proud <laughs> pheasant tail. And this is how it begins. I mean, this is, you know, we start, we start with the basics. We start with the fundamentals. Then we just expand and expand. All right, let's pull this forward. Nice and careful. All right, before I seal the deal there, oh, I, ah, this camera does it no justice. This live feed does it no justice. Uh, UV Peacock Ice Dub. Do I have any Ice Dub? I really don't have much in the way of a Ice Dub. Got orange. Got 
I'm digging. You say it, and I start digging. No, nothing. Nothing like that. Alright, let's go ahead and run our bodkin. Mr. Bodkin through here. And what that does is it just kind of helps puff out the bubble. Because when we've pulled forward, pulled it forward, um, what had happened. Is it all lays flat? I really like that. And I like that little dab of red in there. And you can't convince me otherwise. Nice close trim. I'm going to save the rest of that red for a next fly. Alright, let's go ahead and nice and careful. I like that. Wow, this is cool. Wow, this is cool. Alright. So we get the nice even bubble on top, nice even, Steven, I am going to park this so when it's upside down it's nice and level. Because if I just turned it, it wouldn't, not having a true rotisserie vise, uh, this is what I am just absolutely forced to deal with. You know how much sleep I'm going to lose, though? Not much. Not much. All right. Always make sure your resin flashlight, UV flashlight's handy. And this little dab of glue is right on top. And this is a medium viscosity, so just a little bit. All right. We're going to let that kind of... Drip drain down. I'm gonna pan up on the camera just a tick. That way you can see kind of what we're working with. But then the second I turn it down, oh, we could chase that for days. But you can see where we're working with here, right? We're just kind of letting the gravity do its thing. We don't want it to drip too, too much, too fast. And when it's nice and even, we're going to set it and forget it. Just like that. So you can see some of that iridescence um, underneath. We can see our Little added shimmer on the jimmer on the back on the body. And then we're gonna give it one last uh, kind of click queer clear clear coat. Not a queer coat. That would be something entirely different, I guess. Um, let's see here. Dab. Here we go. Bone dry. And if you are uh, using the solar as bone dry, um, as we approach these colder months, um, if you are in the environment where it does actually do get cold, uh, you'll find that it does kind of turn a little cloudy in the jar and gets a little thick. Just throw it in your microwave. I loosen the cap. Chuck it in the microwave for about five seconds at a time. And usually after about 10 seconds, 
um, we're back to full operational uh, runny full viscosity it's all of its glory there we go we got a little 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 hint of uh, there we go a little hint of red in there I think that's fantastic what do you guys think it's definitely um, not a traditional typical pheasant tail Thank you. No audio. Thank you. I hit my mute button uh, when I slurped my coffee. S trying to be good on that. But we are back now. <laughs> All right. Let's I'll just go to the full, full blown camera. All right. Should be able to hear me now. I can hear me now. Can I hear me now? Can I hear me now? Thanks for the heads up. I uh, appreciate it. Because I'm not perfect, and neither is the technology and all the junk that I'm working with here. We'll have hiccups and glitches from time to time. It's human nature. Um, but, you know, it's we're rolling into the fall. We're rolling into the autumn. It is... September 9th. We're going to have some good fishing this fall. I love nice, cool, crisp uh, air when it comes to fishing. A um, little bit challenging. The fish go a little bit deeper. They act a little bit differently. Um, but anyways, I'm going to take a quick pause for the cause. I need to stretch my back and stretch my ears. These headphones, I don't know what it is. I've never been a fan of wearing headphones Maybe someday I could, I don't know, the, the, the only thing that I use this for is really the microphone. Um, and then I, I listen to myself as a, I guess, a test, but I don't know. We're going to take a quick, a quick pause for the cause, and when we come back, we're going to be continuing our adventures, Fun with Pheasant Tail. So we'll be right back here in just a few moments. We need to... Flip that logo, not that thing over, but there we go. All right, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Please stay tuned. Please stay tuned.
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from our pause for the cause. Here we are once again. For the second half of our program, just wanted to make sure our audio is still working. Second half of our program, we are having fun with uh, Pheasant Tail. So let's just uh, slide over to the bench. And continue on. How's the video quality with the camera zoomed in like that? According to the system, I have the camera zoomed in at 5.41 times the magnification. It's a digital zoom. I mean, there's really no optical zooms here. Um, there we go. All right. This guy off to the side. Just like that. All right. Let's get one more going at least. We'll get another hooking the vice. Again, we're using these uh, these barbless. size 12s. I like tying in size 12s. They're easy for me to see. I don't know what else to say. If you like tying teeny tiny microscopic flies all the time, yeah, that's what you're going to do. Here we go. Hook is in das Weitz. Let's go ahead and start with our thread. 70 denier. 6 ot. Oh yeah. How about some legs? All right, well we'll do some legs. Let's do some legs. We'll do some legs on these ones. We'll do. Uh, we'll definitely do some legs. Oh yeah, I was thinking about doing the knotted legs. Maybe we'll save that for a different, different day. But we'll start with the tail before we get to our legs. Just like that. That's a fantastic foundation. So Jacob goes out every spring on a big pheasant and they always end up with more feathers than you know what to do with. Well, also it always bears being said, make sure that the feathers are clean. Clean feathers are next to godly feathers. Let's grab our wire and I think I want just a regular copper. I'm just going to go with the standard copper here. SM, pop quiz, what does SM stand for? Oh, that stands for small. We all know that. That's my little tip for the wire. This is how I do it. I get it on there. I'm just lightly pressing against it. 
and we got one wrap on it. It's always about that first wrap. Once you got that first wrap, we can adjust our wire to where we want our length. And now we can start wrapping it in. How fun is that? Set that off to the side. Just like that. And we'll grab our pheasant tail for our body. And let's go ahead and tie these in by the tips forward. And I kind of do that same thing. Take that all the way back. Work it in as we work our way forward. There we go. We lost one. If you lose one, it's okay. We had a couple extras in there. like that. Smarge. Smarge. <laughs> I mean, SP I guess would be for sparse. Sparse is nurse. There, don't you know? Okay, we'll palmer our ribbon forward. We'll do one full turn at the rear. Nice even wraps working our way forward. Counter wrapping that pheasant tail body. And just like that. Oh, hit the camera. Sorry about that rocky road there. In like Flynn. All right. Let's get our wing case. Wing case, we're going to go back to our traditional. Let's stick with the pheasant tail. We're also going to use this for our legs. So we can space those out. So we're going to fold those back. double duty out of that. After we get our peacock we're gonna fold those back. Yeah. Mm, I need to go probably just a little bit shorter. Yeah well that's gonna take it back all the way to the it'll be alright. We'll be fine, fine, fine. 34 gauge wire. Is that what it comes out to for a small? 34 gauge? I don't know. Let's go one, two, three, four bits of peacock. 
and I want to do one ostrich. Trim your thread. It's too early for that. Oh, we lost our camera. Okay. All right. We're back. Okay. All right. So, what I have to do here is I have to double check. See what happens, what's going on is my um, camera, my webcam, we lost it. Let's check that now. Hmm. out of there we're going to reset the camera and maybe we will do it again the worst thing I can do right now is panic oh. all right we'll try this again Refresh you. Hit browser. Okay, we're looking like we're connecting. We are zoomed in. Transition out of that. Well, boys, I don't know what to say. Hmm. Technical difficulties. Well, let's just, uh, hmm. Yeah, I can't, I can't access that camera feed without shutting the whole system down. Let's do, we can improvise. Now where did that come from? I don't even know what the heck is going on anymore. All right, we're gonna improvise. Hold on, stand by. I don't know, this, this may or may not work. That's best as we can get right now. Oh, what a pain. All right. You know, I can't even. That's, I have no room to tie. 
so we're gonna just bounce this back. I don't know what to do, ladies and gentlemen. Um, maybe if I just close that all together, maybe reopen that window. I've tried restarting, I've tried. I just can't get that camera back up. I don't know what to do, folks. <sighs> Y'all can still hear me though, right? I don't know. It's extremely frustrating. Well, I think we're just going to wrap it up, I guess. Now it's saying the video froze. Now it's changed. Hmm. Okay, we can hear me. We can hear me, we can see me. We just don't know what's going on with the, the other camera. So what I'm doing is I, I'm using my uh, smartphone as an IP-based webcam and I access that through uh, oh, I got no room I got no room for another camera and there's partially I, I, I just hate that perspective of the fly tying um, but I guess maybe for here tonight to now we can just solve the world's problems other than my camera feed. Uh, camera one, you're fired. Ugh. We'll figure something out. Uh, so I guess that's it for the fly time. We'll just stay social for the last half hour. Uh, let's talk about questions and answers. Y'all got questions? I might have an answer. Let's do that. We got six, seven people tuned in. Um, you guys give me some uh, good random questions, and I might uh, hopefully give you guys some good random answers. Uh, keep, keep, please keep them uh, clean and um, not too, not too deep. We don't want to go down any uh, super deep rabbit holes. And I'm not telling you all my lucky fishing spots either. Um, but I don't know. What do we got? What do you say? How we doing? Even though we're not going to tie for the rest of the night. Um, I don't know. I feel like giving you guys your full two hours. Get you what you paid for. Um, trying to think of some ideas of what to tie moving forward. I'm always trying to think of uh, what to tie. Am I coming down with something? I'm not... I'm not coming down with nothing. I'm healthy as healthy can be. I was out in the cold last night. Um, I might sound a little stuffed up, but no, I'm feeling pretty good. The majority of my materials I get from uh, Hairline Dubbin is my uh, big supplier. I, as uh, all tied up fly tying school, I. I uh, have a, uh, an account with them and uh, they do not do online sales they do uh, they, they straight deal with the dealers and the vendors uh, so oh coming down sometime towards Morrison oh, okay um <sighs> Who knows? We got we got Big Red Fred mobilized uh, to roll around. Um, so who knows? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the majority of my materials I get those uh, from Hairline, um, but uh, my hooks I like getting my hooks uh, from. Right now I'm getting a lot of them from uh, Canada from the uh, Fly Life Fly Life Company. 
Good stuff. Uh, fishing spots won't do you any good. Good, Steve. Uh, guess where the fish are? They're in the water. Ah, that's what I tell a lot of people at the lake. Um, up for smallies. What flies? Good old woolly bugger, man. I My go-tos are always going to be, especially right now, would be some good top water. Um, hoppers, poppers, divers, woolly buggers, clousers. Kind of leachy patterns. I, I, I throw a lot. I throw a lot of woolly buggers. I... It's a good Swiss Army knife of a fly. It, it, it covers, it checks a lot of boxes, especially if you tie them in different colors and different variations, some with or without flash. Um, yeah, imagination being your limitation when it comes to the woolly bugger. It's a blank canvas. There's so much you can do or not do to a woolly bugger, which we discovered last week. Um... I don't know. Let's see here. But uh, yeah, kind of going back to the materials. Uh, always support your local fly shops. Um, if not, if they're not a local fly shop, uh, support the local or not local, but the small business. Because um, local business doesn't have to be uh, the only business. Because if I only supported local business there's nobody here locally for me um, you know by nature I'm already driving out of town well if I'm driving out of town I could deal with somebody out of state or even somebody out of the country um, and uh, you know it's it's supporting small independent um, businesses that work with larger companies you know it's just like my you know I, all the stuff has to come from somewhere and um yeah but i'm not afraid to go out to the local beauty shop and pick up some synthetic uh wig hair or whatever i that's some good stuff good stuff good stuff uh jacob what does he say he, jacob says he loves some top water large mouth bass love them yeah some deer hair top water Maybe that's what we could do possibly next week. We could uh, spin some more deer hair. That means I'd have to clean my bench off because that stuff gets everywhere. Um, and have I fished the pink and white? No, not yet. Not yet. Um, I don't know. Maybe in the next day or so I'll be able to run out there and throw that pink and, pink and white bugger. I have no question about his fishability. No question at all. I love it. Um, I really wish I could figure out exactly what happened to my camera feed. Because it doesn't make much sense as to why it would just flip out, flake out on me. Aha! Aha! We're back! We're back! Hey, let's finish this fly off. I just started clicking around, and the next thing I know, bazinga, there we are. Alright, we'll get you back into. Locked back in. Alright, well, that was, uh. That was something different. Um, I do not have a GoPro. I I did at one point. I had a, a quote-unquote action camera, but it wasn't super high quality. And um, GoPros really don't work very well for this close of perspective. They're not. They're designed to catch the action at, at greater distances and and such, but. Um, this is where we're at. Let's see, what did I have here? I've got one, two, three, four peacock and one ostrich. We're going to twist these all together. Just like 
with that. Oh, we gotta get our thread forward. I am totally discombobulated after that major minor snafu there. Kinda gave us just a little bit of additional fuzziness to this. This is alright. I don't mind it. Not one bit. Yeah, I'm a patient person. Um, when it comes to technical difficulties, it's never always going to be the end of the road. I could have just said fork it and called it a night, but we continue on. It's never, 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 never the end. I'm going to take half of these guys. Oh, I got a tool for this. Ooh, I got a tool for this. Just to pinch it back. Just to pinch it back. Case up and over. All right, we're going to give it our little could have went with a little uneven, but we'll get through it. Nice and careful. And you need a nice, smooth, clean bodkin to do that. And this helps puff that out just a wee little bit. And you want to do that before, before you trim. If you're going to do the bodkin puff magic trick you're going to want to do that before you trim. Hey, there we go. The jigsaw jazz and the jet flash flow. See if we can't zoom her in a little bit. What do you think? I like it. Void were prohibited, not available in all stores. There we go. All right. We'll put you on to our our handy dandy little cork. Oh, we should add a drop of head smut. Back on there, you. A little dab of glue, you. We're using our bone dry for this tonight. He's my new mascot, my little bench monkey. Sometimes I give it a twist like this to make sure that uh, resin doesn't drip into the uh, 
into the eye of the hook because having resin in the eye of the hook that's no fun for nobody that works here we go there's one with legs bada boom bada bing all right let's do I think we got time for one more I think we've earned that one especially after that uh, technical glitch which is it's a good thing that I'm always keeping an eye or I try to keep an eye on the um, live stream on my iPod off to my just off camera Hoyo do fuego, a que hora mañana, por favor, señor. All right. Let's see. really gonna catch you off guard make sure everybody's paying attention what how about some peacock sword we'll do some peacock sword for our tail on this one Peacock sword is a little different than a peacock hurl. Peacock hurl comes from a different feather. Do I have dyed pheasant? I do have a little bit. I at one point I had a couple. I had a pack of uh, an olive pheasant tail, and I was really keen on that. And I have, unfortunately, over the years gobbled that all up. Um, a nice olive pheasant tail is really really nice to have I, I've really enjoyed it let's go ahead and do a silver wire for this one oops pulled that a little too tight just a little too hard there All right, let's get our, our PT. We're having fun. We're having fun tying flies. That's all I can say. At least I'm tying flies. Who here typically ties flies while I do these live streams? Who typically ties along with me? I really am not set up. I really don't 
watch and tie at the same time. Um, usually when I watch a, a fly tying video I fast forward through 95% of it. But I always um, I always leave that thumbs up. I always and if it's if it's a half if they throw if they just throw a half the effort into their video as I throw into mine sometimes, I'll give them a I'll give them a like. I'll even subscribe to them sometimes. Um, I guess we do have a few of us tuned in right now. Uh, if you guys want, totally up to you. Um, later on, I did post a thing under the social or community tab on my page here. My friend Will has been working really hard on creating all these different 20 second, 30 second sound bits uh, about washing your hands. Washing your hands for 20 seconds. It's a, it's a little timer to wash your hands by. Um, with coronavirus, you know, it still kind of amazes me. It's like we're looking back, heck, January, February, March. It's just, it was just this March. There was plenty of people going around uh, just learning for the very, very first time that they should be washing their hands. And what, it's like, are you kidding me? How could you not have known that your entire life? You never taught to wash your hands or wash your hands for a few minutes or whatever. Um, but I don't know. Check him out. Give him a subscribe. Show him some support. I mean, he's right there with Last I Saw. Uh, he, he only had like four or five subscribers. So, And he, he puts a lot of effort into it. He's a very wonderful, talented musician. Um, we actually played together in high school. Uh, I had like one semester overlap of uh, playing with him in jazz band. So it was a lot of fun. All right, let's do, we're gonna go, we're gonna go completely different. I know what I wanna do. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah. I'm gonna get a couple of these. Let's see what happens, look at this. Here is some white. Let's go one, two, three. This looks pretty thick. Here we go. This is gonna come out pretty cool. Has anyone tried using a synthetic peacock curl? I have no, oh, a synthetic peacock curl. I've never heard of such thing. I know there is like a peacock ice dub. Actually, you know what? Now that you mentioned the peacock ice dub, I do have a peacock ice dub. You get a uh, dubbing. That's kind of a regular peacock black ice stub, and then this is kind of the brown. Maybe you can see in there or not. I do. I did have some of that peacock ice stub. Boy, this is going to be interesting. Let's check this bad boy out. What are you doing here, Snarf Snarf? can tell me what TV series Snarf is from? Semperfly has it. Ah, I'll have to inquire. 
Boy, this is something different. Synthetic peacock. Girl. I've, I know there's peak or synthetic quills. Boy, oh boy. Elf. <laughs> nope, close. Snarf. It's a cartoon. It was a cartoon from my generation. Not a classic cartoon. What are you gonna do, Lionel Snarf Snarf? I believe it was Thundercats. Thundercats. Boy, I like that white. It's definitely something different. Boy, I like that little peacock sword for the tail, a little bit of white for the body, for the thorax. Yeah, I know. Steve, you're a uh, Fred and Barney Flintstones. Those were your cartoons. I really liked the Flintstones. What was it? The Flintstones was the first, first TV couple to sleep in the same bed or sleep in separate or sleep on TV or something like that. Flintstones, Jetsons, I love those classics. To me those are classics. Hanna-Barbera. What was it? The, the Hanna-Barbera races. The adventure road races, whatever it was. Oh, so much fun. They don't make them like that anymore. Poor parents are stuck with Caillou and weird junk like that. I don't know. All I know of I've I've seen I've heard some parents just wanting to kill that guy, that cartoon. <laughs> uh, but here we are once again. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap things up for the day, for the night. Hope you all had fun here, uh, despite our minor, major technical difficulty. Uh, yeah, Jetsons, Popeye, the Wacky Races. Yes, those are awesome. Um, let's go ahead and see about flipping the camera back over to here because we're going to go ahead and wind her down shut her down get that up just a little bit there we go all right so let's do this again next week that'll be 9 16 um this friday is patriots day it is september 11th uh Let's not, oh gosh, my ear, my eyes just got a little watery thinking about it. Um, let's not forget about uh, where you were, what you were doing um, on uh, September 11th, 2001, uh, when the uh, World Trade Centers uh, came down after being um, attacked, having airplanes flown into them. Um, and it's interesting because uh, I'll take just one last minute uh as we wind down here uh you know on september 11th you know 
a lot of people talk about where they were, what they were doing. Um, but I want you to just take a few minutes and think about how you felt shortly thereafter. Um, you know, September 11th, Patriots Day, as we refer to it now. Um, it's a time for us to renew our contract, become that patriot. Let's find, let's, let's figure out what exactly we fought for. What are we fighting for? Who, who's fighting for us? You know, that was my biggest thing is, you know, what can I do to thank you as a soldier? That's what I got asked a lot. And it's like, you know, why don't you just, I want you to conduct yourself in a fashion that you're worth dying for. Um, because nothing is, no, I, I just can't imagine trying to be in the trenches right now, trying to figure out, um, uh, you know, what is all, what are we fighting for? What does all this mean? Um, so be the good citizen, be kind, be gentle, help each other out, tie some flies, go fishing, have some fun. All right, everybody. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe. Stay blah, blah, blah. It's been a day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Happy tying. Yeah, sure you betcha. Tight lines. Peace.